Thank you. Further debate. Further debate. Oh, the member from Burlington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. No, I'll, I'll take a few extra minutes. Thank you, Speaker. I, I want to salute my colleague from Glengarry Prescott, Russell, for his leadership on this issue and, and thank our Minister of Environment and Climate Change, who's a friend and uh, a long-time committed advocate for some of the issues that are near and dear to my heart, including cycling, as the House will know. This morning, in fact, Speaker, we had the first meeting of our all-party cycling caucus. It was extremely successful, I think, and very well. Very well done, and it was it it was the kind of nonpartisan cooperation, Speaker, that issues like climate change demand. There's little doubt, Speaker, that climate change threatens the future of our way of life and economy, our health and our natural environment. There's also little doubt that greenhouse emissions from human activity are already contributing to an increase in extreme weather events, loss of life around the world, and and dangerously high levels of CO2 that are already being reached. To delay will be more costly than tackling it now, Speaker. Cycling as a contribution to this is a highly efficient transportation form and and indeed before cars came along it was already a highly efficient form of transportation and indeed it remains today in a growing number of cities uh, a primary mode of transportation increasing in popularity because of its contribution to lowering greenhouse gas emissions as part of the climate change conversation speaker and carbon intensive travel contributes about 24 percent of the emissions in greenhouse gases so it's worth noting that cycling which our government supported which the minister of environment and climate change along with myself, we launched a cycling strategy, the first in 20 years, Speaker, in September of 2013. I stood shoulder to shoulder with him then, and I stand shoulder to shoulder with him now. And of course, cycling is also one of the safest and simplest choices that individuals can make, sorry, the simplest, that individuals can make to reduce their carbon footprint. Very easy to do. It has huge benefits for your health, your wallet. It has great benefits for neighbourhoods, and it decreases greenhouse gases from transportation, as I mentioned, Speaker. Encouraging cycling as a zero carbon option will make an important contribution to climate change. I'm very proud, Speaker, on a local basis of my local chamber. Why? Because at the National Chamber of Commerce meeting, they had a policy resolution that was passed at the Ontario Chamber. It went to the National Chamber meeting, and it too would pass. And what did it call for? It called for the federal government to, um, to enact a climate change adaptation strategy for Canada, Speaker. This resolution was debated and adopted by delegates from across Ontario and from across the country. It calls on the Canadian government to develop and implement a national strategy on climate change that is based on scientific and socioeconomic research, Speaker. So to think that business isn't interested in this conversation, you bet they are, Speaker. They're, they're worried about it. People in my riding are worried about it. My businesses in my riding are showing leadership at the national level, Speaker. So I think we can all agree, Speaker. I've enjoyed uh, being part of the debate today, and I, I really hope that uh, members in this House can see fit to support uh, this. Uh, my member, my colleague's motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.